All right, so uh, welcome back to the next episode of the Grindcast. We're going to have Tommy Vina uh, on with us today. Tommy, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Simon. Appreciate it, man. And, and uh, so a little bit of uh, background on Tommy. Uh, when, I, when I moved to Pittsburgh to start our agency, uh, within the first 90 days, I would meet Tommy, and he would be one of the first uh, people that I would meet from Pittsburgh that would help to lay the foundation to grow this organization to where we are and, and, and where we've gone beyond. Uh, Tommy is one of the most decorated people uh, in American income over the last 10 years. Uh, if you look at his track record multiple times on stage, multiple, uh, every position he's been in, he's dominated, you know, for this agency. And uh, I've had the opportunity to, you know, we have different levels uh, to, to our agency that we've created. And so Tommy has earned the title and level of partner uh, in our business. Uh, he's earned the title of father and husband uh, also outside of the business and coach. And uh, he's doing everything at a high level. You know, I love watching him hang out with his two boys, and, and uh, had the opportunity to go watch him coach. You know, last year some uh, some, some flag football for his young son, and, and uh, you know, all the parents in the crowd were telling me what a difference uh, it, it made in the change in the team when Tommy started to help out and call the plays. And that's called you know, winners win, and cream always rises to the top. And so. Uh, that's just a small uh, background uh, about Tommy. He's, he's loyal, uh, great son, and uh, you know, almost anything you could ask out of uh, out of a person. We all fall short. Nobody's perfect, but uh, you know, Tommy, you you, uh, you get decently close to it. Uh, Tommy, if if uh, if we could start out, man, why don't you tell a little bit about um, your journey uh, uh, in business um, from where we met, um, how it all happened. The process of, of getting started and then walk us through your life, you know, through today and then we'll try to create some nuggets and bullet points that people can take from there. Yeah. Uh, thank you for all, all, I mean, all that. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just saying all that and I'm just like trying to walk through what you're saying when we met. You know, I'm just sitting back here thinking, you know, the day that we met, just trying to relive those feelings and those thoughts there. Uh, and, and, and just to kind of go a few steps before that, you know, how that even happened, right? And and I think it, it was getting into the financial services industry is what kind of linked us together, you know. Uh, I graduated college, you know, no more than probably 20 miles from where you did in the same year, you know, which is kind of crazy. Allegheny, Yeah, right? on Mother's Day, we both graduated, we walked that same year, Allegheny College, Mercyhurst College, so we both dealt with the snow and the cold, and we played football and the mud and all that stuff. Yep. And uh, and you went right into American Income, and and I went into the financial services industry. Uh, I first started out to become a real estate agent, and, and I got my real and estate license. Real estate you license. Know, you were going to do the same thing, so that's kind of crazy. And then uh, my dad pulled me aside, and he was like, you know, every time you sell a home, you're going to get paid on that, but that's going to be end of the story. And, and, and I was like, what do you mean by that? And he's like, there's no residual income in selling real estate. So, you know, he, he taught me about real, residual income. He taught me that, you know, I need to get into an industry where I could build residual income. And, and, and he told me you could become a singer or you could get into the financial services industry. And I said, I knew I Love couldn't it. sing or dance or act much. So uh, I went Thank into God the financial Mr. Vina. <laughs> right? Right? My dad taught Planted me how that seed. Planted that seed. He kind of stopped my career in a, in a, in a dead track, yep. you know, and, yep. and, and made me kind of divert. And, and I went ahead and got my Series 7, Series 66, Life Accident Health. I got into the financial service industry. And I, and, and I, I, I love the idea of helping people financially and doing all that, but I was only doing that for like 10% of the time because I don't know if people really realize it, but when you have a financial advisor on your card, your business card, you're really a professional marketer and networker. I was prospecting and marketing like 90% of the time, cool calling. And I enjoyed working with the people, but the prospecting got old after a while. So three years of doing that, uh, my friend, she saw how hard I was grinding. Um, I mean, my friends call me Tommy Wall Street. This is all I talked about was the financial services industry. And, uh, and then one day she, she, uh, she introduced me to you, man, um, through, through the grace of God, through... Through, through her just looking out, having that just 
knowledge to like know to just you got to. She was even telling me before yeah. I met you got to meet this and, guy. And, and you know, I give you a lot of credit for feeling it and seeing it. You know, because yeah. we didn't have all of the things that we have now to show and show the vision. You know, all we were on is on a vibe <laughs> and a vision. You know, without seeing the picture. You know, even though it looks like we're done with the movie, we're just getting started with the movie. But the movie looks a lot cooler now yeah. with nice cars and beautiful wives and, and big buildings and vacations and you know we were meeting at uh, Jersey Mike's you know having sub sandwiches and and uh, coming over my house you know it, where I had a couple of roommates here in Wexford and and, and I'm talking to you about the, the the vision so thank you for for believing in in the vision and uh, you know thank God for for putting us together uh, so so go ahead and move on move on with the story so you know you, you found a little bit you you, you found uh, some interest in, in what we were talking about. I, I tell Tommy, I tell people that we were dating, you know, for like three months. And I think one of the things that made me feel even more comfortable, you know, with, with Tommy was his biggest concern. And I remember the phone calls like it was yesterday. Yeah. His biggest concern was his clients. You know, he was I just feel bad, man. They, they, these people are trusting me with their money and, 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 and my clients. I just want to make sure my clients... And, you know, I remember not pushing you too hard, but saying, "Take your time." You know, whatever yeah. it takes to put them in a, into a good spot. And and, uh, and and I remember thinking to myself, "Man, if he's that caring about his clients, and and not just making a jump, that's a character mm. that we can build on." And so I would tell Tommy, I said, "Well, the difference is what I want you to do is I want you to love on your clients here the same way, but your clients, you're going to be in leadership." And so your clients are going to become your people versus the clients that you're dealing with financial services. And so eventually what would happen is your clients, the same way you feel about your clients, I want you to think that way about, about your people, taking care of them, worrying about them. And the same way you worried about them is the same way that you've been able to, to, to develop and, and multiply and, and grow leaders in different, different offices and stuff like that. I mean, just to comment on that, uh, when I was an advisor, I think after three years of it, I had close to 200 clients. So I thought when you said that to myself, I was like, three years, if I could just get 200 clients built over here in three years, no doubt. and in them, them regards, no doubt. you know, what kind of success will we be able to have and, and uh, impact we'll be able to make with, with, with that, you know? Yep. So... What, what, what would you say, you know, one, one thing that sticks out about the real estate industry that mirrors a little bit about, about what we do and, you know, I, I, what, what you've done with the math of explaining, you know, Tommy's residuals right now, uh, so this is before he wakes up and, and starts working, uh, should be quarter million dollars a year. So if he said, Sime, I'm taking a year off, I'm not coming in for 2020, he cannot show up, and they're going to pay him a quarter million dollars from what he's built up uh, already from serving people over the last over the last ten years. What he and I have have played with is the numbers of how much real estate you know that we would need to hold and have to get that type of cash producing you know for us, and the amount of money that would need to go into that real estate. And um, I like the real estate industry. Yeah. You know, I mm -hmm. I am a I'm a real estate investor. Uh, you own properties, you know, and, and so I, I don't want to say this to knock the game or I'm not against the game at all because yeah. I participate in the game. Yeah. But what I have learned is it's a whole lot more fun uh, being an investor into the game and building up, you know, real estate it, 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 than it is to be selling it. Mm. And the second thing is it, it typically requires money in the real estate game to make that type. Yeah. And, and, and so here you didn't need to have the money to build up that type of residual income and, and so why don't you explain a little bit because not not people will ex, people that are not in our business need to be educated on residual income yeah. in, in itself and <clears throat> in some of the things that you that you teach on this stuff but there's also I'd say probably half currently right now where we're at probably half of, of our viewers and listeners are in the financial services industry and, and a lot of them are in our business so that they will understand this you want to explain some of that, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's, there's, there's. First of all, declare people have to understand there's residual income and passive income. You know, if if I open up a t-shirt store online, and last night somebody bought a t-shirt, that's passive income. I'm only going to get paid once on that. 
but I, I kind of is passive though because I wasn't actively doing anything to earn that. Residual income is where you do something once and you get paid forever on that. Like Michael Jackson sung that song, Thriller. Yep, my dad said, how many times did he go into the studio and record that song to hear on the radio? One time. But every time it plays, every, every Halloween, someone's getting paid, right? Residual income from doing one thing one time. Yep. So, so in the financial services industry, there's a way to build that. Uh, life insurance, when somebody takes a life insurance policy out, that's what well, trick question I always ask people is, how long should people pay for their life insurance for? Obviously, it's for their entire life, right? So as long as they have that program in place, the person who initiated and rolled them into that helped them and served that client and, and really made a difference because without that agent going to that person and, and making that sale, no doubt. There would, that person would be in the same position they were the day before. It's a night and day difference when somebody has life insurance and when they don't have life insurance. So they made a big change, helped that family out. For them doing that, they're going to get paid every single month essentially for the rest of that policy's life, for the rest of that client's life. Yep. So, you know, in, in, in life insurance, you could essentially do it one time and get paid over and over and over. Now, in the financial services industry, it's a little different because, you know, I would have had to build a book of business and manage your assets. And then if I manage uh, $10 million or $100 million, no matter what I'm managing, you could typically make a half a percent to a percent and a half off that book of business. So everybody okay. would always use 1% as what you would make off average. of your book of business. So if I can manage $100 million and make 1% a year, a I can make a million. But the incentive is for me to manage it good because if I could grow that $100 million to $200 million, now I just double my income. You double their income. Me and you got a skin in the game. I want to grow your assets for you, yeah. you know? But the problem is, is that's not true residual income. Guess what I'm going to do it. every day? Every day you wake up and the stock market is here, and then China does something overnight, and now it's Sometimes over here. Sometimes you're not even in control. You can't have no control yeah. over it, you know? Yeah. Uh, none. And and so 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 that's kind of, that was where I was going, yeah. you know, with it. Yeah. And part of the sales were life insurance, so you could build in some residual income of that in the life insurance sales, because that's what you do. The number one, one of the main things you do as a financial advisor is you protect your clients. Yeah. And we do that through life insurance, yeah. which people don't really realize. Yeah. You know, so when they hear life I, I insurance think of, you know, I, I lucked out getting into the, to the life insurance game, and then I lucked out meeting you. You know, but when I talk about the life insurance game, you know, I, I was doing that about three years before I met you, and I lucked out coming out of college. And the reason why I say I lucked out is anytime you're really doing sales, true sales, not like I'm sitting there waiting on somebody, you know, and, yeah. but like true, true sales, it's uncomfortable. You know, you got to ask people, like even right now, I'm in the process, what a youth program, and this is why I think kids, hey, listen up, kids, woo, this is for you, listen, young people, it's like my son, I want him to wrestle. You got your son wrestling, right? That's awesome. So I, I, I want my son to wrestle because of what it teaches kids. But the base, you know, of everything I've learned in almost 10 years now of training jiu-jitsu and, and expanding into other martial arts, I mean, man, if you got that good base of wrestling, you're, you're, you're really starting at a, at a good spot. Yeah. It's difficult to, to, to get into that game and not be able to wrestle. It's difficult to get into sports and, and not be able to move. So footwork is a good place for you to learn some sports. That's why they say gymnastics or mm. things which are footwork because that'll, that'll pay off in any sport. Man, kids, if you ain't learning sales, at some point you're going to need to learn to sell. I'm yeah. telling you, <laughs> if you're a dentist, you better be able to sell. If you're an attorney, you better be able to sell your case, sell your services, sell, sell what it is that you do. If, if anything that you do. So now I'm working with the, the, the nonprofit youth program that, that I started with others as an expansion of Inspiring Minds and Warren with Derek Tolls. We expanded it out. You've helped me with that immensely. In, in Youngstown, I'm back to selling. And it's uncomfortable. I'm selling the kids. I'm selling what we're doing. And I need a couple bucks a month. And I'm, I'm going to ask you for a couple bucks yeah. Friday. You know, I'm going to ask, and I'm knocking on doors, you know, right now, asking my chiropractor, man, give me a couple bucks for these kids. I'm asking the doctors. I'm asking Jimmy Wan. I'm stopping at the <laughs> restaurant. And I'm like, man, I'm back into door-to-door, -door, you know, I'm back into sales, you know. No matter what you do, if you're going to be a parent, you're going to have to sell your kids a little bit. I'm telling you, if for no other reason, if for nothing else, if you plan on doing 
anything in, like with people, if you don't get yourself a couple years of wrestling, couple yeah. years, a couple years of of sales under your belt, mm -hmm. I'm telling you that'll never, never, ever, ever fail you. And I think when I say where I lucked out is I don't know if I could have been as passionate selling anything else other than knowing yeah. for a fact it's a hundred percent chance these people are going to need this stuff they're going to use this stuff and what happens if they don't have this stuff and and then to be able to be paid on something that you believe in and, and people that you care about and people that you're working with you know we got to work with blue collar people and, and, and all of that stuff so but i got off on a tangent a little bit why don't you help them understand and explain the residuals that you've accumulated. Why don't you use that as an example? And it's going to go up. If we check back in on this podcast in a couple of years, you're going to see Tommy's double. But where you're at right now with a you know, quarter million a year, safely if somebody were to try to gain that in, into something that would pay them uh, residual income, create, like I try to create on the side a little bit of resi residual income in, in, in real estate. And boy, uh -huh. to get 20000 a month, <laughs> woo! You better be pumping a lot of money into that sucker. Uh, you, you, you know, a quarter million dollars a year, that ain't no million dollar investment. That ain't no two million dollar no investment. That ain't even no three year, three million dollar investment. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a lot of money that you would need to pump in. And I think that's what people don't understand. They yeah. hear what other people say and, and they don't understand how much money actually it would take to create. 20 grand a month or a quarter million dollars a year. Why don't you just, That's a lot. If, can you give us the Reader's Digest version education on residuals and, yeah, and, and, yeah. and this as an so, example? So, but, but just to comment on you, you're like, you're going through just right now all the sales you just had to go through for an inspiring minds. And it's looking back oh, at it. I'm grinding. Looking back at it, you kind of laugh and it's kind of, it's kind of almost fun. You know, I remember going through the sales and it sucks being out there doing the sales but then I look back at it and you're like man those were like the glory days and you kind of almost get nostalgic about it you know so anybody who's out there in sales trust me man this is your prime time right now to get your your your, your sales out of the way so that you can you can't give what you don't have so you got to be able to to go through it learn that's why we're able to teach other people because yeah. we've got our butts kicked out there in the field you know best way you learn is through failure so you know, even though it might suck going through it, one day you're gonna be able to sit back ten years from now and be like, "Man, those were those were the days." I remember when I sat down with this guy. I remember this week I had. I remember. Well, this month everybody we had. wants to manage. You know, yeah. I think to manage is is that's great. It's huge. Then you can impact more people. But when you look at management, and it's really I don't really this is deal the first with management. Thing you, you told me that before I got the management here. You got to manage me. Yes. Management. The word management. If you separate, it's manage me. Okay. And so in order for me to, like, we got Tommy, you know, Tommy does wrestling. Well, who coaches him on wrestling? Not somebody that's never wrestled. Yeah. Not somebody that's never, you know, you better put some years into the game before you're teaching my son. And so a lot of times people just want to skip go. You know what I mean? I don't really want to sell. I just want to teach sales, but I've never really sold nothing. Yeah. And so I think it's, it's important to go out there and get you, cut your teeth, get some... Win, get some wins, get some losses, yeah. get some bloody noses, you know what I mean, out there and, and, and learn the process. But, man, you got to teach us about residual income. Okay, all right, yeah. We so, can go uh, on and on. We love it. We love the game. Yeah, we had, we had um, so, so I'm going to get into it. So uh, we went from, you know, financial advising. We talked about life insurance is, 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 is in my opinion, the, 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 the best. Uh, then there's financial advising. That's the way that works. The, the real estate, I mean, first of all, um, to... To be able to get twenty thousand a month was the question. Yeah. You know, I'd save it four million, and that's it at what about a five percent? Yeah. About a five percent yep. return. Yep. That'd be two hundred thousand a year. That'd be a that'd be a probably middle of the road because then yep. some of that you're gonna have to put back in the you know keeping the uh, the, the the places up, up cap and then you're gonna yep. have to you know deal with vacancies. Six percent, seven percent will bring you to to about a quarter mil. Is that what it'll be? Yeah. About a quarter mil. Yep. So you'd have to get right around. Four mil invested. Four mil. Yep. Six. And that's pumping some pretty good numbers. I well, think. where are you going to get the four million from? First, that's you got to make the four million. Well, everybody wants to get in the real estate, but they don't realize you have to take money to get in the real estate. So people start out with these and small And there's other properties. ways. You know, you can leverage that money. You get in the game. You, 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 you know, you can, uh, you know, hopefully the market is where you want it to be. 
Hopefully your your credit is where you want it to be. Yeah. All these things have to play hopefully, perfectly. All hopefully. <laughs> and, and then you can pull some of that equity out years down the road. There's things that you could do to leverage, you know, that, that money. It's a process. And, and it, it's a process, like anything else. It's a process. And so then, then you could go above six, seven percent and go to ten, but then if the market dips, like let, let's say the market dips and we go from where we're at to where we were in two thousand well, all of a sudden, if the property was four million, you might be worth three million now, or two and a half million now. Mm -hmm. The good thing is you're getting cash coming back. People are still going to need to rent, and you, you just got to wait it out. It may take you ten years to get back to that number, or fifteen years back to that number. What I love about this game is not only does it create opportunities to invest into things like that, but what I love about this game is that it's not really dictated by the market. If the yeah. market drops, they're still going to send you a check. People still love their families. People are still like the, the you're not gonna. That's not gonna be the first thing that you're that, that you're taking off the table, and, and so to to get a quarter mill coming in every year and then it goes up, you know, every year, yeah. somebody would need to have, you know, typically three four million dollars in cash, and that would be like you saving right now four hundred thousand dollars a year yeah, over the last. You have to years. have it paid off in full. Paid off. You know, if, if you have $4 million in property, but it's all leveraged out and mortgaged out, you might be getting 20000 a month in, in rental payments, but that half, more than half of that is going to pay the mortgage back. So you're not really clearing it until it's yep. paid off in full. So who knows how long that would really take to have sure. that all paid off. And then if yep. you did have it all paid off, you're probably going to want to, you know, uh, remortgage the place and take the money out and keep doing the no same doubt. thing. But the, the one thing I always point out, though, is if you own all this real estate, it's not true residual income because now you have to deal with tenants all day long. Plumbing issues, uh, zoning issues. If you issues, don't want to deal with it, then you hire it out. Then you hire it you out. Take out of the profit and, yep. and do that. But I don't want my but friends still, to think I'm knocking the real estate market. I got no, friends no, in the real yeah. estate market. That's number two. Yeah, I, I number mean, one's life insurance. Though. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. I mean, that's my, that's my number, number two, two go-to. Yeah, I mean, that's 100%. my... And I also invest into the market a little bit. You know, yeah. so I'm thinking, well, I got money in the market with, with a buddy of mine. I got I got that's money true. in the real estate game with, with a buddy of mine. And those are great. You know, but to, Otherwise, to me, you're going to have to bury it in the backyard. You can't do that. This business is number somewhere. one. That real estate number two, and it, for me, for me, yeah. you know, for it, it, and then the the uh, market stuff is you know a little riskier. That mm -hmm. you know no, number three, um, Tommy, building this business, you know, building what you, what you've had the, the chance to accumulate, and you know, when I read books and think and grow rich, and, and a lot of the books that I'm reading and the people that I'm studying and researching, a lot of the data points to your business prime being in your 40s. And, and not a, and so it, technically you're 35 years old. Yeah. It's another ironic thing. Our birthdays are within a couple of days, like the legit birthdays. Yeah. And and so you're not even in your business prime yet. But over your last 10 plus years, you know, in this business, 12 plus years in, in business in general, what would what would you say uh, people can take from this that you've learned? Can you give us some tips from? Uh, a business building standpoint, leadership standpoint, understanding there's people out here in sales trying to build something. There's people out here, you know, in all different markets. There's doctors listening in right now, you know, but they still got to leverage money and get to the next level. Yeah. What tips on investing into the business, uh, the blood, sweat, equity that it takes, overcoming obstacles and, and, and adversity. If you're sitting here giving me advice and I'm in my first year and you say, man, you look like you got some talent. And I say, Tommy, tell me what it's going to take, you know, for me to get to where you are. What advice would you give me? So uh, I, I don't want to go on a complete crazy tangent, but you were talking about when, when you know, Dr. Finn, he graduated. All these, when they graduate, they, they got to get in sales. I just wanted, as a side note, you're talking about them graduating. I'm like, when people become a doctor, they might be great doctors, but they might not have a great doctor practice because... The they one. can't sell they himself. Sell, you know? That's so why everything Dr. Finn's good. So I just said, uh, yeah, well, he he's, 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 himself. he's the king of the follow-up. He's the king. Yes. He's the king. Yeah, the king of the follow-up. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, you know, what would it take? You know, someone knew. I was just speaking to somebody yesterday about this, um, which is just a, a coincidence. And I said, you, you kind of got to choose what you're what you're looking to, to, to accomplish. If you want to, you know, a small, a small, if you're looking to do something small, it's going to be probably a lot easier. When we went, um, we went out to Lake Mead in uh, Las Vegas, and I took the team out there because we were uh, number one for the year. I took all my guys on a boat, and we, we docked the boat, we beached them, and I pulled off and I said, guys, we got two mountains. We got this mountain over here and this mountain over here. 
And I said, which one do you guys want to walk to the top to? Because I want you guys to just see everything from a different perspective. You know, and, and, and everybody chose the big mountain. And I was like, are you guys sure? Like, I'm the one who was like really, because I didn't want anybody complaining, you know? Yep. And they all chose the big mountain. Yeah. And I said, why? And they said, because it's going to be a better view up there, you know? So I said, be careful. And, 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 and I, would, I warned the girl yesterday. I said, if you want Man, to climb, great choose the mountain. Be aware which mountain you want to choose. But no, if you choose, choose the this, mountain, you want to put the work in to go yeah, see the view. Yeah, that's yes. it. Yes. So, so but the, the bigger mountain was a lot more work. Yes. So we went to the top of this thing, man, and Jess cut her foot on the way up. She's wearing sandals, of course. And uh, we got all the way to the top. Diversity <laughs> on the way up the mountain. And, and the message was, I said, not everybody made it to the invention. Not everybody made it on the boat. Not everybody on the boat even made it to the top of the mountain. But all of us up here look at the view that we have. The perspective on everything is completely different. At the bottom of the mountain, we stood at the bottom of the mountain. If you took a picture of what you saw, like if you did one of these things, all you saw was six feet in front of your face and just a bunch of dirt. you know. And then we climbed to the top of the mountain. And, and it was harder to get to that one. Uh, longer. Um, but the view was way better, mm. you know, and, and it changed our whole perspective. Now, if you took a picture of what we were looking at, I mean, through that, I mean, what did you see? You didn't see six feet in front. You saw miles and miles. You saw everything, mountain ranges, and it was amazing. So, so I said, what we want to do, guys, is, is when you come to the top of the mountain, you want to be able to get a better perspective for yourself, even if it's a five-second glimpse, because now you can go back down and, and your perspective's changed, and now you can get other people at the top of the mountain and help them change your perspective as well. Yep. You know, but what, you know, what would be your mission uh, would be the first thing, because um, if you want to do something big, you got to understand it's going to be a longer, harder, harder journey. Yep. Um, investing, I mean, it's two things you can invest, time and money. So, so if you don't have a lot of money, you got to invest time, that's sweat equity. You gotta grind you gotta, it out. you got to put the time in, man. Yep. And, and, I, and, and, and what I did, I moved right next to the office when I started so that literally I could wake up, go to bed, and I didn't really miss any time did the same thing. at all. Uh, I remember Simon came into the office. He had a map of the United States, and he said, we're going to have offices everywhere. And so we got to get to work. Might as well get some sleeping bags. And he said, I went home, and I said, Mom, I'm going to need to uh, get a place next to the office because <laughs> you know, I can't live in the office. So... Um, just having, I, I think that's just a huge point in, in anybody trying to build their business. You got to be close. I mean, if you're spending an hour and a half, two hours a day driving five days a week, that's 10 hours a week. That's 40 hours a month. That's a whole work week driving in the car, stress, time, money. People don't understand. Sometimes people get to thinking penny wise crazy, and pound foolish. Yeah. You know, so you think, how much, how much are you worth per hour when you start to get decent at something? And so, so let's say you come up with, you know, man, per hour, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour. And, you know, it gets all the way up to 10,000 an hour. Let, let's say you're 50, 50, 50 bucks, bucks an hour. That's 100,000 a year, 40 hours a week. Bam. So, so, so if you're 50 bucks an hour and it's taking That's, you. That would be professional income? Yeah. It, it's taking you an hour to get home, hour to get back. Traffic, stress. T there's two hours a day, five days a week, Risk ten hours. Risk of dying in the car accident. Ten hours. You know what I'm saying? Gas, right? Gas, uh, tolls, beat down on the car. For you know sure, what, sure. whatever it is. And, and so, if, if we just look at saying, well, fifty hours a month, and then how about if you got to put that into working with people? So I don't have time, right? Yeah, right. Or you put that fifty hours in the month into the exercise that you don't have time for, or the people. You know, 50 hours of work more or 40 hours of work more for the whole month because you're driving mm -hmm. th this much time. You look at that 40, 40 hours and you take it, or 50 hours, and you take it times five, all of a sudden there's $2,500 a month well, that you're working. A lot of time, what's the difference between where they're living and moving closer to where they would work? It's yep. not that, they're already paying 1000 and the move closer would be 1500 Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. It's only a $500 yep. a month difference yep. in a lot of people's yep. cases. That's a good, that's a good good thought process yeah, so, sure. so the whole idea of just understanding time and money that's one small little teeny piece little sliver piece to the puzzle right yep. there you know there's yep. and if you're so so focused that you would live that close to the office and you care about your time that much yep. then you understand the, talk the about value the time of it, for a minute you know, you know what what amount of like a lot of people see your lifestyle now and so we talk about passive income and, and uh, you know well, what people don't see in uh, people that have quote made it and you never really make it we're still making it we're still working yeah. on it but you know for for the process of of where you're at right now 
you're not door knocking, you're not making sales calls, you're not going out in the field, you're not working weekends hard, but you, you work when you get home, we do outings for people, and you know, we're always working, but the lifestyle looks phenomenal, where you could be coaching on a Saturday, or you could pick up Tommy on a Tuesday, or you can do, take him to school, whatever you want, and not have to stress over it. People see that life right now, and they're like, oh man, Tommy, you know, he ain't grinding, or he, he hasn't done they forget or people don't realize, same with me or others, what did, what did you do the first five years to get to this position? What did you do the first three years? So why don't you talk to us in general, in a general standpoint, what type of work do you think it takes for somebody to build a business or, or to build themselves up, self up or to be great at anything? What type of upfront work would you say? Yeah, yeah. You know, like what hours were you putting in? In the beginning so I wish I wish it was uh, I could just honestly I, w I wish you know I could tell my my new guy who's coming in I wish I could just say it's 20 hours a week bro but for me to be a good honest decent human being in person and be real you know I'll be lying to somebody if I told them they could get it done in 40 hours a week I feel like a bad a person like how could you go to bed and, like telling that boy he's gonna get to where he wants to go and bring everybody's family his whole family's dreams in 40 hours a week to, to be real, it's, it's uh, I mean, it's 80 hours a week, it's it's seven days a week, it's no days off, and, and that's what your shirt says right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, but, but, man. But from taking no days that, off, no, no, what you get, end up getting is a shit ton of days no off. No days off, though. That's what people don't get. It's like, no, they don't no, get that up. No, it's like, no days off. Like, yeah, no, no days off. Yeah. No days off. So, like, if something was going on in my, let's see, I told my mom and dad what I was doing, I said I'm going on a mission, and they know, you know when I do something, I go all in. And, uh, and, and, and I mean, my mom knew that I, I, I asked my mom, I said, I'm not going to be able to handle anything. So thank you to my mom. Like literally for the first three years of my career, I didn't even know when my bills were due. She, she was like, she just did, did it all for me. She knew that I was, I needed to be zoned in like a doctor, like so zoned in where no distractions. I didn't even know when my laundry, well, I don't know what was going on. I'd show up to my house though. And there'd be bottles of water in the refrigerator you know, food, drinks, and she'd have the place like clean, and 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 I wouldn't have been able to do it without her, you yeah. know. But that's the zone I didn't focus. So small little things like that, like I didn't even let my bills be a distraction, yep. you know. I didn't know what they were. What that they were focus, doing. that zoned in. Yeah. Where are we going in June, middle of June? Will you remember where we're going? We're going that we're going to Italy with our whole families. Our whole families. Are. Our whole. I mean, I'm going with you and Justin and Maddie. Like, the people that were in here grind, like, we were living together, okay? And now we're going to Italy together. And I'm going to Spain. I'm going to Greece. We're going to be gone for weeks. We're going to be going for weeks. Week. Matt D's coming. The whole staff is gone. We're, we're in another country, multiple countries, some of us, for two weeks plus. Yeah. And the reason why we're able to do that is because of no days off in the beginning. Teamwork, man. And well, everybody. Team. Like your mom, your mom was there. Tons of people pitched in. Your mom was there in this teeny little square of a room with another person. Nobody's seen that. Three staff. Yeah. <laughs> How about Nat D's little trap house? <laughs> She had a, little, a closet. You know, all this stuff about offices. You put a window. Oh, man. You, you put a window in a closet to make it look like an office. Well, we had to work with it. I'm Started saying? from the bottom, now we here. Dude, she had boxes stacked up about to fall on her. That's why she built that big ass office. <laughs> You and now she got a nice office with Chanel shoes on the walls and all kind of cool shit, yep. right? Yep, yep. That process. Going to Italy, you know. So I think at the beginning, man, it's a, it, it was it was a, just a lot of time, and, and the only way to do that was to blow out all distractions. You know, my dad came up on a Sunday, and I said, "Hey, Dad, I need to be able to recruit this week and get the and get my team built." But the only way I'm going to be able to do that is, is I also got to hit these numbers out for my production. So I can't be bogged down with making phone calls. My dad came up on a Sunday, and he made phone calls with me so that I can set up my schedule. You know, and, and he and, must have sold a hell of a vision <laughs> for where you were going you know? to have them back you like that. Right. My dad Absolutely. was helping recruit people into the business. Still to this day, you know. Love it. So I think that's a big thing is if you could, can get the, the key people around you to have your back, not be on your back, be on your side, not be on your yeah. back. You know, that's huge. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of kids, you're, you're talking about stuff when we were young, yeah. you know, when we were <laughs> kids, parents and stuff, you know what I mean? And, but the, the key thing is, is a lot of kids or people, they can't even sell their parents, you know what I mean? You have to sell your vision, you know, because what, what happens is 
if you're going to do something out of the ordinary, and you don't have to, but if, you, if you're going to do something out of the ordinary, a lot of people are going to think that you're weird, you know, that you're doing something wrong. And I was thinking of, you know, I don't know about you, it sounds weird, but I always talk about this stuff because I'm keeping it 100 unless you want me to keep it not 100. And so I get a lot of ideas in the shower. And so I grinded out six to seven. I was boxing this morning. I stretched real good. By 7.30, I was in the shower. I'm thinking in the shower, I'm thinking, man, the advice I got to give my kids, like my, my kids, like I don't know what better, like this ain't me just trying to tell people stuff or sell them. Like I'm thinking what I'm going to teach Sienna, what I'm going to teach my son is tell me what your dream is. And then I'm going to tell you, our job is to tell them what it's going to cost, the price of that. You know, Trestle tells me that all the time. Like People say, well, I want to make it to the NFL. Well, let's look at what the size is, what the speed is, the people that play at your position, and what type of work it's going to take. Let's see if you still want to do that. If you do, then let me hold you accountable to that. But I'm going to tell, whatever it is, let's say Sienna, you know, she, right now she's the, she likes to act and model and you know, do these all the things. So let's say she says, man, I want to be an actress. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through and I'm going to explain to her all the people that say they want to be an actress and what percentage actually becomes these actresses that you see on you know, Broadway or the actresses that you see in movies. That has to be less than 1%. Yeah. Has to be. Yeah. And so let's say my son says, man, I want to be, you know, be the best football player. And I was thinking, like, even if he's small like me, I feel like I can teach him how to create that if he, if he has the... The, the just medium ability. Good, average to good, we can go ahead and make you damn near great yeah. if you're willing to put in the work. And so my explanation to my son is going to be, if you're telling me you want to win a state championship, how many teams are in the state? How many teams get to win one? And so that means your, your team, if there's 300 teams out there, you got to be less than 1%. What's going to make you and your team 1%? And so what people need to understand is your your what you want you have to calculate what percentage of America gets to do it. And so if you want to make, you know, I know $100,000, 5%. Go ahead and Google it. 5, 6% of America is, is 100 grand. And so that means you have to do something more or different and think differently than 95% of America. What percentage of Americans would like to have $100,000 a year that don't have $100,000 a year? I mean, I think almost everybody would yeah. want $100,000 and so then let's say, well, my dream is to, you know, it's not just the money, but I'm, I'm pointing it in. You know, I, I, let's say youth programs. Okay, so I, I remember when Derek first met with me, and he tells me, you know, he's telling me that the, the amount of youth programs that start up in, in, in the city period that don't make it past three years yeah. sounds a lot like businesses that start that don't make it past three years. And so when you look at that and you're going through, well, these are the reasons why most of them fail. A lot of them have great ideas. We want to help. I mean, how many people say, I want to help kids. Okay, you want to help kids, but you don't want to, you don't want to grind for the fundraiser. You don't want to go visit them at night. You don't want to deal with the stress and the hassle and the, all the adversity and all that. So you have to ask like yourself. Puppy, puppy syndrome. Everybody wants a puppy. Until you got to clean up the shit. <laughs> Everybody want a dog. You know? and, and, and so what, what I, before, I'm going to pass it over, Tommy, and jump in anytime you want. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, what we're talking about is somebody that wanted to be a part of 1% of an of, of organization, 1% of America. And so part of 1% of America, I heard from Gary V saying, uh, I think 1% of America makes over $400,000 a year. You got almost all of that beat before you wake up, by the way. But 1% of America makes that. That means people that you come in with, if you think, this is where people get in their own head. If there's 100 people, Tommy, that means you have to outwork 99 out of those 100. You can't be saying, man, I'm working so hard, I'm doing everything. Well, did you want to be better than 90% or did you want to be better than 99%? You can't be feeling bad for yourself. There got to be two of us standing out of 200 people that are willing to grind yeah. if you want to be a part of the 1%. So if you don't, you either need to change your goal, which is fine. That's why I never judge anybody. I treat the people that handle our trash the same way I would treat somebody that owns the mall. And I had a friend of mine talk to me from, from Tennessee. She told me where she lives. I said, my dude owns that mall. Like literally where she lives, Mr. Kafaro owns that mall. Mm. And so I'm talking to her about that. And I would treat him 
the same way I in treat Tennessee? The, the in Tennessee. Oh. Yeah, the, the the same way I would treat the people that I love that that clean up our trash and wash the mats for us. Yeah. So I'm not saying that 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 from an ego or issue. Like I'm saying, if you understand, I don't want to put in that much work. I don't want to do that stuff. Then you got to say this is my goal, or you can do what we've done, and I'm passing it right over to you. Here's the concept. Here's why people get discouraged, Tommy, is they say, well. I don't want to not be able to see my kids. Yeah. Okay? You see your kids a shit ton. I, I don't want to not be able to do things with my wife. We're going out of the country. I think you've been, you know, out of the country already once or twice this yeah. year. We've been to Las Vegas. We've been uh, Arizona. Arizona. I mean, we've been with your wife. We've been all over the place of the United States <laughs> of America. But so people say, man, I'd love to be Tommy Vina. You know, I'd, I'd love to. But. The reason why you're able to have all this time with your kids, all this time with your family, all this time with your with them, is because of the upfront grind. And so I'm here to tell you, you can have it all. You can have the American dream if you're willing to pay the price up front. Okay, we're, we're in a credit card society. Like here, let me get this on credit. Let mm. me whoop, yeah. let me swipe this sucker, yeah. and then give me it all, mm. and then I'll pay it when I get an opportunity to. But in business and in life, real life. Like, I can't say, here, hit me with a wand, make me a beast football player, and then I'll go ahead and put in the work. Yeah. You have to put in all the work up front for no pay in football. Like, bet, ride the bench, get redshirted in order to go ahead and, 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 and have an opportunity. Why don't you give them a glimpse of, like, what you think it takes, but what's on the other side? Yeah. Like, put in the work. What does it really take to be great in anything? It's not just our businesses, and, but what's on the other side? Yeah. My son, he said, he, I said, he said, Tommy, when, or my son said, uh, when I can drive, Daddy, can I have a Lambo? That's what he said. You know, all these kids when they're young. Oh, there he is. He said, when I'm 16, I, I, said, said, I, I said, I said, I said, son, yeah, right. I said, son, when uh, you get a, people who get straight A's get Lambos. So you can't get any B's. You can't get any B's. It's what it takes, you know, and, and it's in life, you know. So I was just letting them know up front, like, you're not, don't even think about getting a Lambo if you start getting any B's with your report card. Because it's yeah. like, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyways, what, you know, what it takes, I remember walking in the door and, and, and a manager threw out there, uh, he, he looked at me, he said, are you a one percenter? I said, I don't know, what's a one percenter? He said, you know, are you better than 99% of everyone out there, you know? And, and if you can get into the top 1%, you know, you'll be set, you'll be set for life. So, you know, what, what I did is, is I looked around and I, and I found, and I looked at what everybody else was doing and I made sure that at number one, I was working harder. Like you said, you got to beat everybody with work ethic. So, I mean, I cut all distractions out like we talked about and made sure I, I could put 110% in me 24 hours a day, seven days a week into this zoned in. Um, and because of that, you started to make money fast. Fast. You make money fast. Fast. Because people say, well, I don't have enough money to get started. Like, you made 10 grand your first month. It don't take money. It just takes time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was doing that. And then um, I think when you ask the question about building a business, though, it's, it's you have to beat everybody else, 99% of everybody else with, 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 with character as well. Uh, and and um, Reinvesting. Investing. If everybody else is investing, you got to invest more. Not not just your time, but 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 money. With, with your money. Yep. You know, smarter. And I've made. And the only way you get good at investing, the only way you get good at anything is by doing it. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about making professional income, fifty dollars an hour. That's what they were saying. You know, to make professional income, you have to first be a professional. Yep. You don't. You know. You you don't say, well, pay me professional income, then I'll start being a professional. But it, you know, Malcolm Gladwell says it takes ten thousand hours to become a professional or anything. So if you want to do 40 hours a week, that's going to take you about five years to hit your 10,000 hours. If you do 80 hours a week, two and a half years, and you could become a professional. Yeah. But I mean, that's at one thing. So in our business, we got to do sales, we got to do recruiting, we got to do investing, we got to do self development, we got to help others. So people want to, you know, uh, give to others, but you got to first pour into yourself. And people are like, well, I'm not that good at developing myself. I said, well, how many hours have you put into developing yourself? You're not a professional at self-development yet because you haven't put 10,000 hours into developing yourself. 
you know, and that and that's why you're not a professional at developing others yet because you haven't put 10,000 hours in developing others. It takes time and it's a process. So if people are starting their business, they can't come in thinking they're going to make professional income. But if they put that time in, and then what happens is when you get the t you put the time in, I made money. And when I made the money, I found ways where I could take the money and, and invest money. it back into the, the business to buy me time. That's where I watch you be. Like get it an assistant. Nobody saw that. This is this is where you beat a lot of people that were you know if they're neck and neck and you you both were putting in time and then you both got the same amount of money. I watched you pull away in the investing side. You would and still you invest heavily. You invest into the business to buy yourself time in the yes. form of assistance, staff, but also to make more money. Yeah, and, well. and it's not like and so when you invest the money back into the business to get you get you results too. You invest the money to make you some money, but also to buy me time. You know, so by having the assistance. Having a staff, having um, having somebody to help you with with making phone calls, all that stuff to buy your time back. And then if you take that time and you pour back into the business again, now you're going to be able to develop yourself and become a professional in more aspects like recruiting. How are you a professional to recruit people? Are, I'm no good at recruiting. Well, you haven't spent ten thousand hours recruiting, making calls, doing interviews, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, you're not a professional in sales because you haven't spent 10,000 hours out there doing face-to-face -face sales. You're not a professional on the phones because you haven't spent 10,000 hours doing that. So, you know, you really got to add that all up. But you can fast forward that like almost like a time machine and get stuff done instead of five years, two and a half years. If you understand the, the concept of time, and then you could use the money that you make and invest it back in to get more time. And here's the key, though. When you get that time, you, you have to take your time and go back to work with it and use it to make more money. And then you get that more money, and you put it back in, and and then you get more time, more money, and you comes more time, more and it keeps going too. though. So so what what and we probably got another five ten minutes, in 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 the part of what being more successful in anything, not just money, but just elevating yourself, is going to come with more obstacles, adversity. Um, how would you? One of the I mean, there's, you've been through tons of adversities, but you know, one sticks out about you know Antonio who, you know, it, it, Tommy's son had uh, heart issues before he was born. We knew this was going to happen, and uh, even a percentage of kids don't even make it, you know, when that happens, and the stress that that could put on a family and on a person and uh, as a father. Uh, and, and so we go through that, and still the business is, is, is okay. But that's just one. That was recent. This, I mean, you had adversities all the way up. So any tips you could think of to, to give people? How have you been able to mentally because we all have mental battles if you show me somebody that has lasted to be successful is to last and in you know I, I i don't know if it was it who was it pop i can't remember who said to live is is to is to struggle you know or to survive is the meaning of of, of, of struggle but to, to get to where you need to be i mean that we're going to struggle and you're going to have adversity you're going to have obstacles and I think people just give up during those moments and think it's only them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and they don't see the person that made it. They just were able to make it through the same stuff differently than, than you. Is there anything in your perspective, anything in your mindset, anything that you could coach somebody on that would help them when they go through the adversities and obstacles? You know, because you're going to have rain in order to see the sun yeah. and appreciate the sun. So anything that you could think of that you've been able to do well, I mean, when I was down in business, I would always tell myself it gets darkest before the dawn. So, you know, one bad thing would happen, another bad thing would happen, and sure enough, another one. And then that's where most people start to, to, to crumble, you know, and then and then that's where you should really get excited, though. And I would start to trick myself and get excited and say, listen, some stuff went down, probably a couple of more bad things are about to happen, bro. So just get ready. I'm talking to myself. And, and then... Uh, and then sure enough, three bad things happened in a row, and I'm like, I knew it, and all this is happening because, you know, it's the devil trying to take me out because it sees greatness in me, yeah. and, and he, he doesn't want me to do what I'm about to do because I'm about to go help a lot of people and do good. Yeah. So it's a lot easier for him to take me out now when I'm young. It's like a weed, like I'm, I'm going to be a big oak tree, but I'm just like this little plant right now. He's trying to take me out while I'm weak. So if you have awareness, you know what's kind of going on out there. Uh, then, then you're not going to be as uh, thinking like the world's out to get you. People think, oh, the world's out to get me. Everything bad's happening to me. And you think everything bad's happening for me. Getting in, it's just the devil trying to get at you. And if you don't understand, then he's not going to want to mess with me five, ten years from now when I'm a big oak tree. He's just going to want to go after some small little ones because those are easy for him to pick off. You know? yeah. So if you have an understanding of that, 
uh, really, Spiritual really helped warfare. me. Yeah, that was big. Um, uh, what else? I think, you know, I think uh, when my son was, you know, in the hospital, you know, I think um, I talked to Marcus Smith, and, and, and he said, you know, I just this quote always sticks with me, you know, I don't know, you know, what the future holds, but I know who holds it, you know, or, but I'm confident in who holds it. You know, and then controlling what I can control. Anytime I got in those situations where I was just completely just, I didn't know what to do. I went back to back to the basics. Control what you can control. Yep. Seven habits yep. of highly effective people. Yep. You know, and that's a big one. Huge. I think when people get stressed out the most, I couldn't control they, my son in they, the hospital. They're trying to control what they There's can't control. There's nothing I can control about it, man. There's it, nothing I can Not control. Not many things are more stressful than, than somebody trying to control Completely something out of that's control. out of your control. You know, I yeah. just sit there and do what I could control, which was like try to make sure the room was set up nice. Make sure my wife was in the best spirits possible because I felt like the baby would be able to feel her. Spirit. And if she was good, then it would put. And, and, and the doctors and, and the nurses said, you know what, he healed up fast, he healed up healthy, and you guys were there every single day. I think it made a big difference. But, you know, I think it was, I mean, we That's had another thing that people don't see. In there, man. That not cool. only were you there every single day for months, months, yeah. um, and, and, and he had a quick recovery. And then he had to go home and we had to be zoned in. But the support that you receive from people around the country, you know, in, in the company, talk about family and, and loyalty you know yeah uh, man it makes I, a big difference I was proud huge difference but another thing is what what people don't look at is man they say man Tommy was able to be there every day can you imagine if you were at a nine to five or you, you know how much vacation time would a person have to take for six months or three months they don't have the ability these kids their parents weren't able to be there in the ability that we had to keep the income flowing keep the company rocking, keep the agency rocking, keep everything going while we're there with the family is the exact fruit from your labor that you receive when people think that you were doing the opposite. Putting in a lot of work in the upfront in the beginning, well don't you love your family? Dude, well now you get a chance I to spend time with I your family. I never knew. I never knew this was going to happen. I right. never knew my second son was going to have open heart surgery three days after he was born in three months. You know, I didn't know any of that was going to happen. But before I even had a family, I knew I needed to grind in my 20s Set it up. because when I have a family, I'm going to love them so much and I want to be able to provide everything for them. I never was thinking that I'm going to need to grind in my 20s because if something really bad happened in my 30s, I'm going to need to right. be funny. I wasn't even thinking about that, right. you know, but uh, but I think, you know, the, the whole situation when he was in, in the hospital, um, the, the company, well, I didn't get a chance. I was on stage in, in Las Vegas uh, like two weeks ago maybe. And, and I was going to end it. I was going to say I'd like a chance to build up the company for a second and build a whole room up and tell everybody. Uh, it was written down in my speech, you know, that you know, I was going to say how, how Antonio was in the hospital and through one of the hardest times, we had people all over the whole entire company, people from literally every, every state, people I never met before, really? reaching out, just even if it was a Facebook message, social media, but I mean, we had flowers. I remember Mike Vasu sent the biggest stuff bear ever with like a huge fruit basket. And little does you know, but that fruit like made the day that day. It was like everybody was loving it, the step, the nurses and everybody. Uh, and, and all those small things, people taking the pictures of the hearts, like you don't know how much that really, really, the, like the thoughts, the prayers, you could feel, like you could feel it. And really, uh, really was amazing how everybody stepped up. Simon, you were, you, were, you were flying up from Florida. Maddie D was coming. Justin was coming. My, my mom was literally there every other day. Like people were bringing us food so we didn't have to go home. It was just like unreal and it flew by and I mean it's sad but I mean the kid in the, in the room next to him didn't make it you know and and I was eating food with his dad you yep. know like yep. it was it was it was it was rough it was, you, to go to a funeral you know for a baby it was yeah, just no like, doubt. unreal no especially doubt. when your son went through that no doubt and 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 I mean it, it, Children's Hospital was an amazing place you know really yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Great I try, job, Children's anytime, Hospital. Anytime I try and sure. give back, like people say, what can you donate to Children's Hospital? Easy one. Yep. Watch it in action. You Watch know, you, you know, action. your money's going to a good cause. No if doubt. You do that. No doubt. I think uh, in, in in closing, Tommy, and, and thank you for for uh, for for everything that you do, and thank you for being on the grindcast. Um, I would just say that you know you brought up Mike Vasu and the Big Bear, <laughs> and and you know Mike Vasu's slogan is sacrifice creates. Opportunity. Opportunity. And so what we're what we were talking about is the sacrifices, you know, we didn't really have a plan to talk about that, yeah. but 
what would end up happening is if you're going to talk to somebody about having success, you're probably going to start talking about the sacrifices. And the sacrifices are what created, you know, the opportunity uh, that you have and, and the opportunity that you've been able to give, you know, to, to so many people. So uh, thanks for all you do, Tommy. Keep on grinding. Keep, right. on, keep on doing what you do, brother. And uh, we'll see you again soon. 100% commission. 100% commission, brother. Let's go. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me.